I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And I'm JT, the husband of Faye Daddy. Yes, Faye Daddy is coming in. <laughs> so today. Wait, are you Faye Daddy? I am Faye Daddy. You what? haven't caught on? Have you not caught on? I wasn't you not paying attention. On? No, not at all. I'm Faye Daddy. I just Hello. thought it was just an overarching term. I want a hat. I want a <laughs> just Fay Daddy. Yeah, I want wings and a hat that say Fay Daddy on it. That's uh, Done. what I would like. We're on it. And my familiar is the squonk. Squonk. So oh, yes, poor squonk. She's looking at me like I need I need a yeah. Fay Daddy hat and I need, Daddy I need hat. a squonk squash. Flush. Yes. <laughs> well, at yes. the very least, a squonk T-shirt. Yes, uh, definitely a squonk. A yes. squonk shirt. Squonk shirt. Um, but yes, yeah, so today in Fade Daddy News, um, we are going to be doing an episode where I'm going to be reading to Chris and JT some news articles that have been associated with rumors of Fay like activity, and we're going to decide whether or not we believe the Fay have a hand in them. So... That's going to be the Faye segment of today. All righty. Uh, but today's Faye news. Yeah. Faye news. Oh, that's funny. Faye news. <laughs> like fake news, but Faye news. <laughs> Faye oh, news. Oh, God. <laughs> or it could be Faye news. Yes. It's the Faye news. The Faye news. The Faye update. Uh, but before we get into today's Fay news, uh, we are going to happily thank our sponsors. So we want to thank Cosmic Corner, uh, which is a local metaphysical shop here in Savannah. They have all your metaphysical goods that you could possibly need from everything for uh, your witchy practices to your altar goods to books. There's ghost hunty so sort of stuff. They don't have equipment, but they do have lots of reading material if you want to learn about different entities or you want to learn on how to better um, utilize your time when you're investigating. So yes, they have yes. a lot of resources on that. And you're, and if they don't live here, they can buy online, right? Yep. You can buy online at shopcosmiccorner.com. It nope. is fantastic. So definitely support them. Um, but also we want to thank our other sponsor, which is Savannah Repertory Theater, which is our local professional theater here in Savannah. They are an equity theater and they are going to be doing their first production of the fall season, which is Empanada Loca. Oh yeah. Which is like Sweeney Todd, but Hispanic and really fun. Um, it's based on a TV show, I want to say, or mixed, mixed right. around. Yeah, I think the it came play, before. TV show might have come before the, the play. Or, no, the play came before the TV that's show. That's it. And then there's a podcast as yes. well. Um, but yes, it's about a woman named Dolores Roach who lives in the... Um, an abandoned subway station and she basically has some mis um misdoings that she has done in a very yeah. sweeney todd manner so you won't yeah, want to miss the it savannah area the uh, savannah repertory theater puts on outstanding productions it's going to be fantastic and so it's going to be fantastic and it's in their new location which is uh, right there on the corner of habersham and uh rotten street Yes. Yep, yep, yep. And tickets are currently on sale, so you can buy those on their website. Uh, the show is going to be September 7th through the 10th, and then again on the 14th through the 17th. So if you're going to be in the area during those weekends, definitely come out. Um, all three of us are going to be there on various nights. So uh, definitely come join us. It's going to be a really good time. But cool, cool. with that, let's get into our Faye News. Faye, Faye news. news. All right. So... Some of these stories are not from 2023. I think the oldest story that we have comes from like 2014. Um, and then there's one that's more folklore news. So do you want to start with 2014 or do you want to start with more current events? Let's start, let's let's start with newest, oldest right? new. Okay. So let's talk about a man named Sean Ritchie. So this is going to be the mysterious disappearance of Sean Ritchie. Da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. And... Mind you, he disappeared on Halloween night. Ooh. 
So, on Friday, October 31st in 2014, Saturday, and into Saturday, November 1st, 2014, Sean Ritchie traveled in a van with a small group of friends on the A9, uh, not the A981 to a remote farmhouse in the Greenburn area near Strick, uh, Striken in Scotland. He yeah. vanished without a trace from the woodland near the, Cur- the Cursey Hill farm. This is all Scottish stuff, so excuse me when it starts to get really into the <laughs> the the middle of the highlands, it gets weird. But Sean had been at home that day in Fraserburgh um, with his family before visiting a convenience store and left with friends to celebrate Halloween. Later that day, on November 1st, two emergency calls were made to police from the Greenburn area, one requesting help and the second canceling the requested help. Who exactly these calls came from is unclear. It was one of the largest coordinated missing persons investigations in Scottish history. Wow. After this huge search, only his shoes, hooded top, and belt were found. Nope. Mm -hmm. Whoa. But Sean has not been seen since. Medical experts believed he may have become disoriented in freezing conditions and stumbled into a bog. They like territory. <laughs> oh, God. But no remains have been recovered. After years of searching, what happened to Sean? Murder? Hypothermia? Accidental drug overdose? Something more sinister? A Halloween mystery from Scotland. Extensive and detailed searches were co- conducted with assistance from every specialist air, land, and water resource with more than 200 officers covering more than 15 miles of ditches, rough terrain, and large water areas. Police also used forensic soil scientists and geoscientists. The searches were conducted with the help of the Grampian Mountain Rescue Team and the Aberdeen, Tayside, and RAF Kinloss Mountain Rescue Teams, a dive and marine unit, a dog unit, and Police Scotland Air Support. There you have it, folks. A patch of neighbor... That is quite uh, right? a search. That is quite the search. A patch of neighboring woodland to Kersey uh, Hill Farmhouse comprised of rowan, ash, and spruce trees, mm-hmm. which are also very very um, associated with the Fae as well, because those are all very spiritual trees, um, was heavily searched during the initial investigation. At the time of his disappearance, Sean was wearing gray jeans, a white t-shirt, and a gray hooded top. The family enlisted the help of Glasgow Group K-9 Search and Rescue and its human remains detection dog in 2015, but the Springer Spaniel failed to, d- to pick up a scent. Oh, see that? Dogs? I mean, mm-hmm. that's the... Especially cadaver dogs. Right. So they're, the, they're the best at what they right. do. Exactly. And so if they can't find something... It's not there. Yeah. It's true. And so... Um, discovery of clothing and boots. Five days after Sean was last seen on Thursday, November 6th, specialist search teams recovered items of his clothing from the area near Greenburn. These items were found in a bog. Shoes, hooded top, and belt. Nothing else. Huh. Then the mother was arrested. So in August of 2016, Sean's mother, Carol Ann, 38, Mom was... Mom was arrested? Yeah. Was charged with wasting police time. Oh, that's terrible. Right? On top of losing her son? Yes. Goodness gracious. She believes her son was harmed. She even called in a psychic to visit the search site who now supports her theory. Oh, my God. It's believed the charges relate to anonymous text messages she sent to Sean's close friends and family suggesting that Sean had been murdered. Charlie Reed, Sean's father, was working in Saudi Arabia when news of Sean's disappearance broke. Said, uh, said on the bad day since his son vanished, it's hard to function. Charlie was critical of the investigation by Police Scotland and has stated his belief that Richie was killed over a debt. Whoa. Yeah. Really? But why would his body not be found, though? I mean, well, honey, they could have... They, yeah, they, but, they could have buried it or But the uh, dogs couldn't it. pick up a scent or anything? I, I don't... Yeah, Well, if they know. moved his body far... You know, if, if, yeah. if it's not there... But the dragging scent, it. even if they, they had to drag it, you can something. drive across Scotland in three hours. It's true. So you can get, you can literally, Put it you on can a be boat. in Inverness, murder somebody, and then bury the body in Edinburgh by the afternoon. We're not saying you should do that. 
Right. This is not an outline for getting but away we're from murder in out, Scotland. <laughs> we're weighing out the possibilities of is this a fae type kidnapping right. yeah. or not. So Yeah. Yeah. So review into investigation. A review by the major investigation team in Glasgow of the work of Police Scotland was done, which included a review of forensic work and search activity carried out as part of the investigation. Detective Chief Inspector, oh Lord, uh, Fanola, uh, Fanolia, Fanola, Fanola La. <laughs> it is quite a name, Fianola um, McPhail. We'll call him Detective McPhail, um, who oversees... It just sounds like a, you're making fun of him. <laughs> hey, Detective McPhail. <laughs> McPhail. <laughs> How's your latest McFailure? <laughs> so he oversees the inquiry and said, he, we fully appreciate how hard it must be for Sean's family with another year passing since his disappearance, and my thoughts are with them at this difficult time. Our inquiry into Sean's disappearance remains one of the largest ever missing persons operations in the history of Police Scotland. Hmm. Chief Inspector Stuart Drummond said, To date, these reviews have all concluded that this, this remains a missing person inquiry and there is no evidence to suggest that Sean has been the victim of any crime. We will, however, continue to keep an open mind and I can provide every assurance that we will act on any new information provided to us. Friday, October 31st, 2014, last seen by his mother on Friday evening at home in Watermill Road in Fraserburgh. Um, the same day, CCTV images are captured of Richie visiting a convenience store in Fraserburgh. Um, Friday, October 31st into Saturday, November 1st, Sean traveled with friends to a farm in the Greenburn area uh, near Stricken. Sunday, November 2nd, Mr. Ritchie is reported missing at 8.45 p.m. on Sunday evening. On Thursday, November 6th, police officers recover several items of his clothing, including his shoes and his belt from the Greenburn area. The aftermath, the farmhouse near where Sean Ritchie was, um, was lost was put up for sale for 350,000 pounds in May 2015. What happened to Sean Ritchie? In questions, what happened to Sean after leaving Fraserboro in the van and headed to the party? How did he end up in the woodland near the Kersey Hill farmhouse? What happened during the Halloween party? Why did the search only turn up his shoes, belt, and hooded top? Where were his remains? And what role did his friends play in the disappearance? And that's the end of that article. I feel like we didn't hear enough about the friends. I mean, right. he was with right. friends and then he disappeared. What, what is their story? What, yeah. what do they have to say about it? Maybe yeah. they were put in a trance by the Fae. Boom. To cover their tracks. I'm not convinced it's not the Fae. Um, yeah. The curiosity of shoes, belt, and hoodie yeah. brings about like all kinds of bizarre Moida. notions. Um, well, right. I mean, if you went with Fae, uh, just, you know, classic turned you into a newt kind of situation, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like, boing! Oh, so and here's the here's the thing that a lot of people don't know about Scotland. There are no dangerous animals in Scotland. It's true. Zero. Right. There are zero. Da you you do okay. Wait, hold on. There is a snake. I think it's the what is it the UK asp or something. I don't know, but it's nothing like crazy. No, it's not like a diamondback or anything. Right. All right. So oh, it's a European uh, adder. I think. Right. The um. Adder. And so. It, it, but there are no wolves. There are no, no. bears. There are no man eaters right. in Scotland. Right. You can go through those woods, and as scary as they are, you're not going to get attacked by something fierce other than a human or fey, according to Fey Daddy. So here's the thing. I have also been to the Scottish Highlands. I have also been in those woods. It is incredibly easy to fall into a fey trap if you wanted to. If you were in the middle of the woods and it was dark enough, and there was a fey trap, you could step right what into it. What does a fey trap look like? It depends on which fey you're dealing with. Um, so a lot of times they're naturally occurring archways. So like if you see trees that are naturally occurring into this arch, mm -hmm. or you'll see a um, an arch in the that's off the path, a lot of times it's... Um, oh, I've seen that. We saw one in Hawaii. Mm -hmm, we did. We yeah. saw a very perfect um, fey trap, essentially. And then also, a lot of times, it's mushroom rings, yep. which, 
again, Classic if it's Washington really, movies. really dark, which it does get very dark, because that happened in the Glencoe sort of region, mm-hmm. um, it gets really freaking dark out there. And so if you're just walking in the woods and you're a little drunk or you're a little high or whatever you're doing, and you could step right into a mushroom ring, and there you go. You've been s- snagged by the fey bear trap. So it's, The fey bear trap. That basically is what it is. Oh, my God. More or less. Yeah. And there are even more insidious ones uh, because ash trees. Um, if you lean against an ash tree, you can slip right into Tyrion and Og. You know, it's a... Um, Which he was... It's slip right into what? Uh, Tiernan Og, uh, Tiernan Og uh, well, another plane of existence. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, the concept being that, that the fate live in another plane and they travel to and fro. So a, a, a fate trap basically puts you in the other plane. So you step into it and you're in another plane. Now, the, the interesting thing is sometimes it's as simple as um, an unattended portal. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily a trap. It's like um, because uh, Faye will use tethers to other planes, and, and ash tree is one of them. Uh, and if you touch it while it's active, you're gone. That's, that's just it. And if you have na- unnatural fibers, unnatural fibers stay behind. Only natural fibers can travel through. So if his shoes were made of like polyester, if his belt was unnatural, if the hoodie was unnatural, all those things would stay. And he, in his cotton shirt and jeans Mm -hmm. would have gone over so and i mean that's that's not to say that's what happened it's just an interesting thing because you start to think well what kind of hoodie was it you know was it a Mm -hmm. heavy polyester you know thing um because the concept of unnatural things not being able to traverse to the other plane is is a story you know uh there's a lot of things uh that people believe cannot you know pass or, or synthetic materials can't go into the fairy world and are left behind. So, um, and there were ash trees along with rowan trees, mm-hmm. which are also yep. very, uh, very prominent very much so. in folklore and things like that surrounding the bog where his clothing was found. So, oh. interesting, interesting. I mean, I do not subscribe to that's so what happened to him. I'm almost positive that something terrible happened to him that involved his friends because he was with a group of friends. And if the group of friends do not have a, a an answer to the separation and the fact that we're missing yeah. that, the fact that it's like right? authorities question the friends and the friends gave us this detailed account of, you know, when yeah. he separated from them, you know, that, that just sounds like, you know, uh, maybe he got alcohol poisoning and they're like freaking out and they put him in the back of the van and drove sure. to the other side of Scotland and threw him off a cliff. You know, uh, oh, for sure. however you wanted to, to what was his name make again? that. Um, his name was Sean, Sean Ritchie. Sean. Uh, U-N? A-U-N? Uh, A-U-N. Okay, Sean Ritchie. I'm going to pull up a photo for the live stream. But anyway, you keep going. So into the next story. Into the next story. Into the next story. This one happened pretty recently in February of 2023. Oh, very recently. Yes. <laughs> the strange disappearance of the YouTube survivalist uh, Finn Craney, Craney, I'm going to go with Craney, um, in the Scottish Highlands. Scotland's a dangerous place to go walking around. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Yeah. I mean, well, because you can literally go everywhere. There's a right to roam law, so it's right. literally yeah. if you pull off and you see somewhere pretty, you can do that. But also, the Fae are really good at making things look really inviting, so I will that say, you come into Madison them. and I roamed a lot. We did. All we did was roam because it's just an incredible freaking place. And if you've listened to any episode on this podcast, we usually talk about Scotland. <laughs> It's awesome. It's true. Yeah. Don't be afraid. It is really actually pretty safe. Also, here is a photo of our boy Sean. Chegou a melhor parte do podcast. É hora de provar a melhor Coca-Cola. A Coca-Cola sem açúcar. O sabor irresistível da Coca-Cola sem açúcar e igualmente refrescante. Coca-Cola sem açúcar. A melhor escolha.
Pausa rapidinho agora para falar de dica de ouro para os papais e mamães. Depois de experimentar a nova Hug Supreme Care Fralda Roupinha, tudo ficou ainda melhor para o meu filho. É a única com canais em X que se adaptam aos movimentos, com duas vezes proteção noturna e cintura elástica que se adapta ao corpinho do bebê, além de ser super fácil de colocar e tirar. Praticidade pura. Então guarda essa dica. Nova Hug Supreme Care Fralda Roupinha. Bebê, estamos juntos nessa, mais do que nunca. Agora curta seu podcast. That's him. Mm -hmm. That's him. So, 32-year-old Finn Craney from the Tain area set out at around uh, 2.15 p.m. on Friday, March 25th, 2022, for a hike. He was dropped, uh, dropped off by Locke Navier, or Naver, Okay. Um, on the B873 public road in Sutherland in Scotland to start his planned walking route around the lock and south to Glossby. His route took him around the area around Alta Nahara and Glossby. Finn was a keen outdoorsman and survivalist who started a YouTube channel under the name Wildcat Bushcraft hmm. in January of 2021 to showcase his survival skills in the, hot, uh, the Scottish Highlands as well as the beautiful scenery of the area. Several of his videos highlighted his ability to build emergency shelters and survive in sub-zero temperatures. Okay. Despite his survivalist experience, March 25th, 2022 was the last day Finn was seen. Despite a large search operation, 10 months on, his, on he remains missing with no clues uh -oh. at all found about his fate. <laughs> Did wow. he become lost? Did he fall into a bog? Or despite all evidence, has he disappeared into, to start a new life? <laughs> his wife, Lucy, said in February of 2023, when my five-year-old daughter cries at night for her father, I repeat what I have told her for almost a year. Daddy has gone on one of his adventures. I don't know what's happening, but I'm doing everything I can to get the answers. I love you. I love Daddy, and I miss him. Every time the phone rings, my heart leaps when he, the thought, it's him. With the thought, it's him. Lucy believes she will fi still find Finn because people don't just vanish off the face of the earth. It's a weird thing, though. According they to bring Faye, up bodies Daddy, they again. do. Apparently, um... It's worth mentioning that if something falls into a bog, it is very difficult to get out to of the recover bog, recover, and or even know it's there. Mm -hmm. um, bogs are notorious for keeping their secrets, um, uh, and and very possibly even to the point of confounding a cadaver dog. Um, I that's don't know crazy. if that's true. Yeah, I only know that this is two stories in a row where the bog angle came up, and I know that bogs which are basically swamps mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, uh, because I want to say uh, when I was growing up, there was the famous bog man where they actually found a very perfectly bog preserved man. body and it turned out to be thousands of years old wow. <laughs> that wow. it had fallen in the bog. And because the bog is full of like peat moss and all kinds of chemicals that, that very well preserved this Ew. body. Um, but when you think about it, that means that people were just walking by it, you know, being in the bog, being around the bog. And there was a body, you know, and it wasn't that far from anything. It was just wow. like one of those things where like, oh, you know what? The bog can hold on to its secrets. It can it can hide things. Um, this just sounds like a, a, one of those terrible stories of hubris. You know, yeah. um, uh, it, it vaguely reminds me of Grizzly Man. A little bit. You know, the idea of going out against nature and having this concept of your comprehension of nature being so infallible uh -huh. that you could survive anything. And then realizing nature's got a lot of cards up her sleeve. You know, there's a lot of things that can take you by surprise. There's a lot of things that can, you know, so the idea of constantly pushing yourself to survive extreme circumstances, that's a, that's a losing bet ultimately, Yeah. you know, um, because there's always going to be something that you didn't account for, you didn't know about, or that was more difficult than you thought, or, you know, because something as simple as like uh, spraining your ankle, can lead to death in the deep depths of nature. Uh -huh. um, so it's, it's, it's bizarre, again, that with all the concerted effort to find him, there's no evidence of remains. There's no, right, you know, yeah. That's the thing that, is, that keeps coming back is where, where are the remains? You know, where, you know, uh, because a survivalist, 
uh, would have sought to create yes. some kind of I was gonna say you that. Know, camp I was gonna or say some that. kind of you know, thing that would have at least given you an indication that he was there. Yes. You know, um, so I don't know. And, and maybe if we knew better what his last attempted survival thing mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. you know, what, what was it, what was he going out to, uh, I think he was just going out for a hike. Yeah. See, that's, that's so bizarre. That you is know, super bizarre. Uh, especially like, uh, uh, a, a, a survival, uh, a survivalist who knows, you know, terrain and knows how to survive and how to live to go missing on a hike. Right. You know, I mean, that's irony is what that is. Yeah. That's, that's deep irony that he goes on a hike and then rolls into a bog. <laughs> it's like, nope. So I didn't think about this. <laughs> the story has some similarities to the missing YouTuber Kenny Veach, who vanished without a trace oh, in the wow. Sheep Mountains near Las Vegas after trying to find the mysterious M Cave in November 2014 which is a whole different thing. And the reason why we aren't doing that is because that is more aligned with the belief that um, National Park type cryptids took that man, but which Faye and cryptids- Faye and cryptids, very closely related, you know, yeah. And, yeah. and actually when you start to break down like every culture's versions of uh, these tricksters or other world beings, they actually have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. You know, they actually live in, you know, cause like, uh, in the case of, of, of Las Vegas, you're looking at um, the indigenous people's belief, and they had the first, second, third world uh, interchangeable. So like uh, uh, the first peoples can travel to the third people, which is us, and, and drag them down to the second or first plane. <laughs> so, and it sounds very similar because it, it they have the same kind of traps. Uh, certain caves will lead you straight to like uh, the first world, which is world of darkness and, and uh, the primordial or origins place. So yeah, uh, when we talk of Fae, we are putting a pretty big Celtic lens on it all mm -hmm. because they, I would dare say that thanks to the Irish, we have probably one of the most well developed, right? Like histories of uh -huh. this civilization, these worlds. But when you go to the other uh, cultures, they have very similar things. Mm -hmm. You know, the Oni of Japan. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, they are other world beings that can torment and torture and show up and and drag off to. You know, I think China has multiple hells that you can get entrapped in and enshrined in. So when you start because we're talking about missing people the concept of accidentally walking into mm -hmm. an area that is rife with that kind of paranormal activity um we are dealing with the definitions that people come up with right you know uh we still like every time we we, we go on the fey uh discussion it's important to know that we're using words and definitions that are furnished to us yeah it's not a comprehension of what actually is happening it is a a resource that we have, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, somebody set this down, and that gives us words. Like when we use the word demon, we're not necessarily talking about the the Christian, you know, uh, construct of demon. We just know that the definition of the word fits the elements of the story that we're telling. Mm. It's true. So, um, so w it, it's interesting if if we ever get into like the indigenous peoples, um, regions or cryptids or things mm -hmm. like that. Cause there are people who believe that Bigfoot is an interdimensional traveler. That's why we can't find him uh, is because he actually appears through a portal <laughs> from his own world and then disappears, you know, just as easily and only spends a very small fraction of, of, of his time or their time in our, you know, perception. Sure. And then also, I just wanted to show, we have some people in the UK that uh, that listen and watch and whatnot, a good bit actually. Um, and so, uh, this is Finn, um, if, you, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, and you can also uh, Google Finn Creaney, Scotland Missing, and you can get all of these, uh, you get all these photos if you're, mm -hmm. you know, just to keep an eye out. Absolutely. You know, he, he might be, you know, disoriented, lost. He, yeah. Uh, he might have started a new yeah. life. He might be working at that coffee shop down the street. You so, never know. Um, um, but yeah, the a lot of these are set in Scotland because I think it's fascinating, it, which really. is really weird. But I will say, if we have enough time, we'll talk about it. But it might have to wait for its own episode. But it's called the Vanishing Triangle in Ireland. Oh yeah, which is basically just like where yeah. people just 
disappear without a trace. There's a vanishing triangle in Massachusetts. Mm, that's creepy. Yeah. That's oh, very wow. creepy. Um, but to give you some, actually some understanding, Chris, we hadn't gotten to it in the oh, article oh, okay. <laughs> um, of why he was out there. Oh, good. <laughs> so he was on a YouTube adventure. Um, huh. So the weather was unseasonably hot that weekend in March of 2022. Finn planned to go on one of his solo adventures in the wilderness, something he had done many times, an experienced and confident survivalist. He was completely at home in nature. His intended destination was the Loch Nevir, uh, Naver area, uh, about an hour's drive from his home in the countryside outside of Tain in the Scottish Highlands. Um, we said, he said goodbye to his wife, Lucy, and four-year-old daughter, Luna, that Friday morning, and Finn drove to... Go- Golspie Beach car park around 17 miles away. He left his car uh, there with the aim of collecting it at the end of his hike, and a family member then dropped him off at the B873 road at 2.15 p.m. at a car van park, and this was the last definite sighting of Finn. He left Lucy a voicemail at 12.52 p.m. Um, Oh, I think they might have meant AM. Um, on Friday, March 25th, hey, honey, I love you lots. I'm really proud of you. As she was launching a business as a florist, and he promised to be home by midday on Sunday to deliver the Mother's Day flowers for her customers that they had ordered. According to his wife, Finn always kept his promises, and he never arrived home late. Finn's phone cut off at 1.47 p.m. in the village of Lairg, and um, no messages were sent after this. The cell phone had either been switched off, broken, or had run out of battery. Lucy said she could see the messages she had sent him later that afternoon and evening um, hadn't been read, and she thought that was strange. As she knew Finn would be using his phone to film his adventure for YouTube and for navigation. She didn't think too much of it at the time, as she thought he would be okay. He always was, but he wasn't. Mm. The search. Goodness gracious. On Sunday evening, Lucy started panicking that Finn hadn't shown up by midday, and although this was inconvenient, she assumed his hike had simply taken longer than expected. By 6.30 p.m., however, she was really starting to worry. She assumed perhaps his phone had died and he couldn't get in touch. On Monday morning, Lucy rang the school from Finn, where Finn worked, teaching bushcraft to children. Oh, God. Um, Finn Creaney's wife... Um, Creaney's wife and this, or I'm Finn Creaney's wife, and this is going to be sound weird, but is Finn there? They told her he wasn't, then went and checked the whole school. Called back and confirmed he definitely wasn't there. She then rang the police to report Finn missing. Lucy said, even then, I still felt ridiculous. I was sure I was overreacting, all but certain that police would meet him on his walk and he would laugh. Are you for real? He's like a cat. He always lands on his feet. And always comes home. But I also couldn't help thinking, what if something had happened? Had he had an accident? What else could have gone wrong? Looking back, I think I probably went into a state of shock, unable to make sense of his absence. Finn was described as five foot eleven, slim build with a light complexion and freckles on his arms and nose. He has long brown hair down to his lower back and a full brown beard that is short in length. He was last seen wearing a black t-shirt, a knee-length brown leather jacket, dark-colored trousers, brown waterproof boots, and he was carrying a green rucksack. He was planning to film a YouTube video, so it was presumed he was carrying a camera or several cameras. Wow. Police searched the area between Alta Nahara and Golspi in Sutherland with the support of the air support unit as well as a number of partner agencies including Mountain Rescue and Coast Guard. The search lasted three to four weeks, but no signs of Finn turned up. There is no evidence that Finn would ever choose to go missing intentionally, and there was no signs of a mental health crisis. The business he had launched was starting to take off, and he had a strong relationship with his family, having been together with his wife for nine years and gotten married in 2021. Hmm. The family did everything possible to find Finn after the official search finished, including ground searching on many occasions, poster campaigns, social media appeals, online searching, and research. But there was no genuine sightings. Apart from some bikers who believed they saw Finn at about 3.45 p.m., roughly three miles down the road from where he was dropped off, and they said he seemed cheerful. 
Others have oh. come forward and reported sightings, none of which have matched. Mm. So, so the biker saw him three miles down the road? Right after he got, right dropped, after he got off dropped off at the start off. point. Oh, okay. So yeah. it really... And he was cheerful. Yeah. So it wasn't so like... He, nothing was wrong at that point yet. Makes me wonder if his equipment seemed expensive. Like if he had a, an expensive equipment. Yeah. Like if somebody came upon him and, and decided a crime of opportunity. You know, Interesting. Because it's, it's, it's terrible. And being so fresh, you know, he's... he's Within the realm of imagination, sure. a survivor, you know, sure. uh, because there's no body, there's no, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, that's so, so terrifying, you know, to have so many unanswered questions. It's, it's definitely one of those things where people get into that frame of mind where it's like, if I just knew, yeah, you know, um, because, yeah, it's, it seems implausible. It's true. That it's he would just befall yeah some he was teaching bushcraft to children so you know he clearly idea, knows what he's doing right, he knows what right. he's doing that he would get lost seems preposterous the sure. idea that he would you know um run afoul of something that he couldn't handle seems you know out of order he didn't he i i do know that most likely he didn't have much to defend himself with because they're really really strict in scotland with carrying knives you right. obviously can't have a gun sure um, yeah but i think so he it, couldn't defend himself very well unless he had like a club on him or something right. like that but even then you can't carry like a pocket knife or like bush you can carry uh, I, th I feel like i i, I remember looking because i have a pocket knife and i carry it everywhere so i remember like looking into the laws and you can carry and uh smaller the knife actually the more legal it is now i don't know there's a lot of people listening to this and they're probably like you're an idiot but like um <laughs> and i believe it's like the smaller the knife uh the or just like all knives and then if you're a chef you can have your knives on you that's uh, that's no that yeah. makes sense yeah if you're a chef you can have your knives on you um and uh there has to be a reason for you to have this type of thing right. on you sure. um so i guess that would be a reason but you know yeah. him being a very experienced and like expert yeah bush yeah, craftsman, he, yeah, he would have known those yeah he would have known those laws here's the he thing yeah. where this happened is up near inverness yeah. i mentioned that earlier in the episode um We've been to Inverness. It's a very we know it place. was <laughs> so Scotland in general is just unbelievably safe. I mean, it's yeah. unbelievably safe. I would mm. have like equipment out, and I didn't. I didn't feel like I feel like here in America, where it's like you you got to watch over your back. I I don't watch. I didn't watch over my back very much because I didn't feel the need to because it's just so freaking safe there. Yeah, people like, are just pleasant just and crazy. kind of mind their own Although business. Although two it's... entirely missing people in a yeah. six-year period of time. There's another does one too. Raise questions. There's another one. Mm -hmm. Okay, There's let's go to the third. Yeah. Next, okay. next, next one. Although I can't rule out foul play in this yeah. notion, nor could I conceivably rule out serial killer. Oh, interesting. You know, uh, to encompass the two stories we heard. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because because of the nature of just vanishing, vanishing. entirely, yeah. just totally makes me think there had to be something that triggers the the absolute disappearance of traces. Fae. Yeah, okay, or it's just <laughs> <fae>. or the <laughs> fae, or the or fae. fae, or the fae. But so this last one is um, the strange and unexplained death of Nicholas Randall in the Scottish Highlands. <laughs> okay. So uh, Nicholas Randall disappeared April 25th, 2005 in Edinburgh. And then his body was found in 2008 in Auk Forest near Bridge of Orkey, Argyll, Scotland. Okay. Suffering from depression, 30-year-old Nicholas Nick Randall decided to drive off from his family home in Edinburgh in April 25, 2005, and headed from for the Scottish Highlands to avoid being a burden on his parents. He was never seen alive again. Nick vanished in 2005 after buying a sleeping bag in a store in Edinburgh and withdrawing 500 pounds from an ATM. And the last confirmed sighting was at the Tiso Outdoors shop on Rose Street. And after that, he vanished. He seemed to vanish. For two months and a half, um, two and a half months, nothing was heard until his silver Audi A2 was found in the Glen Nevis Waterfall car park near Lochaber. 
Um, police believed he was living in the wild hills in the area, especially as he was an experienced climber and hiker, having bagged many of the Scottish mountains called Munro's. Um, in the following months, there seemed to be some sporadic sightings, including some walkers at the Glen Tilt in Perthshire and Blair Castle Caravan Park, where a man matching Nicholas's description had asked to pitch his tent, but after that, nothing. His body was finally found in 2008 by forestry workers in the Auk Forest near Bridge of Orkey, mm. um, Argyle, in a pitched tent. The location was around 47 miles from where the car was located. The case was cl- quickly closed by Strathclyde police, who suspected no foul play, but the revelations of an ex-cop, Kenny McKinney, um, 47, changed all of that when he accused former colleagues of a cover-up to save money. Whoa. Whoa. Now, I don't know why people are calling this Fay-related, because so far, I just, like... Yeah. yeah but I this is, know. like, on the list of people that are, like, Fay capturings, well, and I'm just, like, know. this sounds like true crime. But maybe maybe the Fay poke, poke a hole in there every once in a while. The first two sound way more fa- fa- like, fantastic, if yeah. you will. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. So when Randall's tent was discovered, two sleeping bags, a hold all, different sized boots, and two sets of clothes and rucksacks, as well as a used condom, were found. Hmm. Also, what was said to be a shallow grave was found in the vicinity of the tent by an off duty police officer sometime before the s- discovery of the tent. So the questions that were relating to the Randall case. Police investigators assumed that Nick had succumbed to the elements and died in his tent from hypothermia. His mental health issues would have lessened his chances of survival in the cold Scottish winter. But the evidence is puzzling. The shallow grave, the sets of clothes, Nick had been living with, and had Nick been living with an unknown individual in the hills, was he murdered? So that's all they had for him. That doesn't sound like Faye to me. No. No, that, that, no. That That's not really the face, like, face, like... No. M.O. Yeah. D. Although there's a lot of classic face stories in which a person disappears and then reappears. Right. However, usually they're very old when they reappear, um, and it's only been a short period of time. Um, but the concept of disappearing and reappearing is not uncommon. Uh, my question is, was he in the shallow grave? No, Or was, he was it in the his partner... T- so nobody was in the shallow grave. Oh, it it had dug. just been dug by the tent, which sounds more like somebody was trying to kill him in his sleep or something and then yeah. throw him in the, mm. but maybe Bizarre. got caught. Maybe. Well, I mean, it sounded like he, he found someone and, and they were living together in the woods. Right. And, uh, you know, however things go wrong in those types of relationships, um, Unless they want to suggest that that person was a fae, some incubi or succubi, mm-hmm. you know, that uh, that was living out some, you know, sure. I mean, pseudo relationship in the woods with with a human, and then one day it's like, well, I'm done with you. Boop, boop, boom. So that's the thing is like you know with this last one. You could stretch it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it takes work. In, it takes work. In a way, uh, but, you know, in just my opinion, I wouldn't call that fey behavior. The first one is pretty compelling with the the, the belt and the shoes, shoes and, and the, the hoodie. I mean, there's, it's just weird, you know, when it comes down to it. And these are, you know, these are obviously tragic cases and that the speculation on them, you know, coming back and forth, you know, to, to wheel around a fey you know, hypothesis uh, is more about how baffling it is. Exactly. Uh, because these are baff- those are baffling instances. This does sound like uh, a, a pretty cut and dry case of a person who fled from their lives, was living in the woods, obviously met someone, mm-hmm. and then probably ran afoul of whoever they met. Exactly. You know, and so, um, yeah, two out of three, I would say, or maybe Faye. Not enough evidence to to clearly say I would give number one the most. Well, that up. mysterious shoes, belt, and hoodie raises all kinds of questions. It's like, did did he go in? Did he go for a swim in the bog? Don't do that, by the way. Don't, Don't swim, swim in, the bog. in the bog. Do not swim in the bog. But <laughs> I guess as the uh, the finishing point, if you're going to be in the Scottish Highlands, keep your wits about you. Because apparently... And maybe don't be alone. 
Yeah. Well, that's always a good rule of thumb for yeah. being in the uh, well in the wild anywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, don't don't go alone. Don't uh, go alone. And it, it yeah, this is that's a that's a sad statement of modern life. Um, it's it's hard to uh, to be alone in in the wilderness because there are so many factors and those factors are oftentimes other people <laughs> it's true uh and just the act of having someone else with you diminishes your chances but it doesn't make you safe there's plenty of horror stories of you know um couples or or, or multiple people running afoul of somebody but also don't swim in the bogs and don't, don't in walk bogs. in fey portals yeah and if you can help it stay away from the fey traps yeah, so, um, but with that though, y'all, um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, if you want us to talk about any more type of fae type of activity, or if you have any particular fae entities you would like us to do a deep dive into, let us know. Um, but other than that, my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And stay spooky, y'all.